everyone. It's Jane. No, it's not Christmas. I haven't been missing for that long. I, it's been about three months. I caught the flu in March and it really did make me quite ill. And then I had a few other niggles and, well, it's just not been a very happy time. I haven't even done any crafting, no work in my silhouette studio at all. And yesterday I thought, I'm going to make a start on Christmas cards. I like to get ahead so that I can give the people that I make them for a choice to choose from and I can start making them in plenty of time. And I fired up my computer in the kitchen that operates my Silhouette Cameo. It went into a Windows update and it never came out. The only option I've got is to turn it off. It won't restart, it, it just won't do anything. Fortunately, I do have a spare computer and my husband is going to set that up for me at the weekend. But as you know, when I show you anything in Silhouette Studio, I like to show you the finished article if I can, so that you can be confident that what I'm showing you on the screen is what you'll get if you actually have a go at the tutorial. That might be done a little later. Maybe I'll add a photo or two once the computer is up and running again. For now, here's the Photoshop version that I worked on yesterday just for a little fun. And we're going to have a go at drawing this ready for printing and cutting, if that's what you want to do. Or, of course, you could use coloured cardstock and cut out the shapes. To make things easier for myself today, I'm actually going to open this version of the card so that I can use it as a guide. It always helps, I find. So that's my five inch by five inch square card that I decided I wanted to work on. I know it's been a long time, but if you remember, I always like to do a one click zoom in because then my inch measurement on the screen here measures almost an inch in real life. And I know then that I'm designing things at the right sort of size. I'm not always very good at doing things really big and then resizing them. I like to work at actual size. I'm going to start with the easy thing first, and that's how I did the lettering. Now you can use any font that suits your little image and whatever you've got on your machine. Before I start, I'm going to open my colour panels for the line and the fill. And because we're starting with text, let's open the text style panel and then click the text tool. And because I've been practicing, they're already in my list here. And the first one I'm going to use is one called Fancy Outline. And I know that I did it at a size of 28 points. And I also increased the character spacing a little, and I went up to 110. And I want black for the outline, but it's an outline font, so I still want to click black for the fill colour. But I don't want my lettering to be cutting, so I'm going to make sure that the line style is transparent. And now I can type my letters, put my capitals on, and type Merry, and then click out. Now it is quite light, and so I'm going to change my line colour to black, and that just thickens it up a little bit. And then I'm going to increase the point, and I think I went to something like Let's see, one, maybe one, no, that might be too much. Let's try one. I 
can't quite remember what I did. So that's my first bit for the outline. Now I'm going to change by clicking out to the front seat full, same size, 28, same character spacing, black, but I don't want a line on this, so I'm going to turn that down and also put it back to transparent. And I don't want black at all, I want red because we're doing the inside. Now, if you have the designer in business edition, you'll have an eyedropper tool here. So I'm going to choose the same red that I've got here in these colors. I'm not going to spend a long time choosing colors. Remember that if you want more than the reds offered in your panel here, you can go down here and use your rainbow to choose exactly the sort of red that you want. I'm going to stick with the red that I've chosen, click my text tool again and type the word Mary. And now we want to line these up and I want the red behind the black. So let's use the send backward and you can see now it's behind. Let's center these together with the quick center tool here and then I'm going to zoom in so that we can click the red and use the arrow key to move it to the right. I think that will probably be enough. We'll fit to window, one zoom in, click out. Yeah, I think that's quite good. So I'm going to group those together so that they stay like that. I don't know if I want to make that black. No, I'll leave the black for now. You can always fiddle with your designs later, of course. You don't need to see me doing my overly perfectionist routine. Let's click the text tool again. This time I want black. I don't want it cutting, so again, I keep my line transparent. Now let's just do the word Christmas and then line it up just underneath. I did it so that the H is just up at the side there. In fact we'll just make that a little bit more spacing. There we go. So that it just extends past the word merry. I quite like that. And let's group those together. So that's our first little bit done. So let's just move that over there. I don't need text anymore. Now let's start and do the design. And for that we can actually use this Photoshop version as our guide. We know we're going to need a 5x5 five five card. If you hold down your Alt key and drag, it will copy. And I can use that just to draw out some basic sizes and shapes. Let me show you. First of all, let's do the circle. And that wants to be filled with white. I am going to be cutting the circle out, so I'll put the line on in red, making sure it's not the same red as I'm going to be using for the berries and the lettering and the robin's red breast, because otherwise we'll be in a real mess with cutting later. Hold down the shift key and let's draw a circle. And I think I did this at about 2.25. And if, like me, you can't actually draw out straight away to that size, type 25 with the padlock check there, press enter, and now I've got a perfect circle size. There we go. 
I'm going to need a little hole in it at the top for the string or of course I could just punch one afterwards with a crocodile or even hole punch so I might not draw that in but if you want to you can just draw a smaller circle in fact I'll show you we'll just do alt and drag to copy this one hold the shift key down and just take it right down and then line it up in the middle keep it selected click your circle and then use the align tools here to center them and that's near enough done and i could group those and then i'll be able to move it as one well. so that's how you can put your circle in if you want to do it that way or you can just punch it afterwards like i said now we're ready to do our bird now i could trace this one that i've done earlier and certainly you could do that too if you find a bird shape that you like however let's just move that over here and see how we can go about drawing it from this shape just by looking at it let's choose the color we'll do the same brown that i've chosen there by using the eyedropper you of course again you can use any browns and reds that you like and i'm going to start with a sort of egg oval shape and sort of something like that and we're going to use my old friend point editing to make the rest of the shape so let's double click to open the point editing tool and click here and we want to get this curve first for the tail and Let's do this. Just drag the blue handle and grab it like so and then move and shape it by pulling the handles until we sort of get a bird shaped body. And we'll pull that out there. Pull that out there. And we need to make it a little bit bigger and maybe just a little bit taller. It won't be exactly the same as the one I've done because I can never do things the same twice. I don't know about you, but I've never managed it. So we'll just do something that's very similar for today. So that's our main starting point. Now, these little handles are excellent things these drag handles for nodes but they can get a bit complicated and not do what you want them to when you're trying to make the rest of the shape so let's zoom in so that we can see what we're doing and now we want to get this little bit of his tail there and going up to the other one so let's add some anchor points by along this line here so i'm going to need one underneath where his first little bit of setting the tail goes and i want another one probably so let's put that in and then let's pull this down so we've got the little tail coming that way oops let me use undo there we go and i can get back and pull that like so so i'm sort of getting there it looks a bit like a fish at the minute i know and we've got this one going up there so i think we're going to need another point aren't we and that needs to do something like so and then this one wants to just come up a little bit and 
wants a little bit more of a curve there. In fact, let's move that up a little bit more of a sharp curve. And let's move that out again there. This may be a case of fiddling with it until you're happy with the way that it looks and just messing with the handles until they do what you want them to do and we could make that a corner one actually and that means we can make that come this way a little bit give it a little bit of a kick like so oh now that's looking better isn't it and we just need this to be a bit more pointed, don't we? So, let's see. Can we get that to be a bit more pointed? Let's move that up. Move that there. And let's move this in a little bit. And move that up a little bit. And take this down. See, it's all a question of just moving things around. Now, that's not perfect. But you can see the idea. It's not far off. He's a bit wonky on his old face, though. So let's move him up a little bit there. Oh, that'll do, won't it? That's not too bad at all, she says, having another fiddle. There we go. I think that will do for our basic robin shape. For the red breast, I'm going to duplicate the basic shape. Now, I haven't decided how I'm making this um, once my silhouette cameo is up and running. I've got two options. I can do print and cut, um, which of course is always one of my most favoured options. Or I could use some coloured cardstock and cut out pieces. My original idea when I was making this yesterday was I was thinking I would cut out the bird body and the wing so that I could stick that on and give it some dimension. And also the holly leaves and maybe the berries, although they're a little bit small. Although if you've got something like red enamel dots, you could use those for the berries um, or any sort of jewel that you could stick on with glue if it's red. Um, and if I had some of the red Nouveau drops, I could use those and make my own. So I've got options. I don't know whether I'd actually um, print and cut these tiny little berries. Um, I think that might be too fiddly. So I'm not sure how I'm actually going to do it. But as you're doing your design, you do need to think about what areas you're going to be cutting and which you aren't. Because sometimes it's very easy to forget where you've left cut lines on and then you go off to your machine and either you haven't got a cut line for something you did want to cut or you've got cut lines where you don't want them. So have a think about how you're going to do your robin so that you set everything up. And the reason I went into that long little explanation there is if I'm doing print and cut, it's unlikely I'm going to print and cut a separate piece for his red chest here. If I was doing separate pieces of cardstock, I may do, but I'm not. I'm just going to do print and cut with the brown and the red all in one for his body. So I can hold down my Alt key, drag, and I'm going to turn off the cut line immediately so that I remember. I'm going to use my dropper tool to make that red. And then I'm going to line these two pieces up together. And that way I know I've got it exactly at the edge with each other that I want. Click out and then double click the red to open point editing so that I can just 
bring it down to this nice red area. I'm going to, let's zoom in. I forget that I should zoom in sometimes. So here we go. I'm going to add a couple of extra, well, a couple of extra points. I'm going to put an extra point there and an extra point down here. But now I'm going to start here and I'm going to go around and delete the points that I don't want. And now I'm sort of getting his chest, although I've probably got it a little bit high up here. So let's bring that down, put a new one in there, and then I can just move this over like so and we'll make that smooth and on this one I'm going to make it a corner so that I can just turn that up and make it a little bit straighter and that will probably do for now I can do any other fine tuning once I've got his wing done there we go now if you decide that you're body of your bird is still looking a little off and you want to resize it, remember to select both of those pieces together so that you can pull them out and resize them together. There we go. Unless of course you only want to move this bit over here. I just want to make him a little bit fatter there. There we go. The wing again is quite simple. It's just, we'll start with an oval and I'll choose the dark brown. And let's just draw an oval shape. Twizzle it a little bit. And double click. And this is another one where we're going to be just, let's see, which is the best way to do it that way, I think. Just pull that down. And let's pull this down here, make it a bit bigger. And let's pull this one out a little bit, make it a little bit bigger there. And if you're a better artist than me, you'll probably have, oops, I don't know what I did there, but I've added a point, which I don't want. And let's just make that curl up a little bit more. Click out, click on it again and give it another turn and that's better that will do nicely i think there we go a wing the beak is similarly easy we'll use the draw a polygon same dark colour and I just need a triangle so I'm going to just come down here and use my grid lines so click click and then join it's not very straight but it will do rotate it and bring up my beak and it's going to go underneath the body a little so that's why I wasn't too worried about it being straight and I'll use the send to back until it disappears behind and that also will let me know if I've got it big enough which I think I have I think that will do there we go the legs are also very simple we're just going to do little rectangles probably about, I was going to say about a square, I've got my square 
um, an inch with eight divisions, but it's probably just a bit less. So 0.1 of an inch there, or thereabouts. And I've got little short legs on the robin, haven't I? So let's put that about there. Send it to the back. Hold down the Alt key to make another one and send that to the back and make sure that it's level by selecting them both and clicking align bottom. That's our basic bird shape coming along nicely. For the eye here I did a line, just a plain line, draw a line, no fill so let's make that transparent, black, and I don't know what width I did, but let's go for four. Let's try that. It's probably far too big. Oh, yes, it is. But at least I can see it. So I think we'll go down to two. Maybe one and a half. Yeah, one and a half. Now... I want to put a bit of a curve in it, so I'm going to zoom in, double click, click this end node and choose make curve. Now it doesn't always do it and if this happens to you it's because it's not highlighted so we actually need to go to this one over here so that the whole section is highlighted and now if I click make curve you can see I've got a little handle there now I don't want to move that one I want to move this one so that it does that I've got a little curve at the bottom but that means I want to straighten this one there we go. And of course it's too big at the minute, so let's just make it a little bit smaller. Oops, I've added an extra point. There we go. And let's move it into position and see whether it's too big or not big enough. It's not far off, is it? Let's just make it a little bit smaller. There we go. For the moment, I'm going to just group the bird together and move him down here. We're probably going to have to resize him. I've obviously made him a little bit bigger than I expected. But let's draw the rest of the elements and holly leaves. Do you know, I had such a job with holly leaves. I can't draw them to save my life, really. So, let's have a go. I'm going to pick... Oh, never pick a colour while you've got a design selected. Click out. Now, let's pick the colour, although it has already done it. But The times I've inadvertently changed the colour of something because I haven't realised it's selected. Holly leaves. I've been trying to work out the best way to do these because I never get them right each time. And I'm going to go for draw a polygon. And it, as usual, there's a little bit of point editing and fiddling going on. But this is the way that I found works best for me. I start at a middle point and I just do three ins and outs and I've got everything wrong here for colour and everything but we'll figure that out in a minute. So let's just have a go at this and see if it will work how I expect. I've actually got a black line round which is what I want, but I don't want it at 
four. So let's take that down. 1.75, one and a half. And I'm going to double click to open point editing. And then I'm going to be making all of these curves. And you'll see why in a minute. I could have drawn it with the curved shape tool, but I actually found that I got in more of a mess with that than by starting off with it straight. So that's why I've done it this way. You can do whichever one suits you best. Really, these are just ideas of how I do things. Doesn't necessarily mean that I've got the right idea at all. And let's pull this little arms in to make it level. There, that will do. And then we need to change them to corners and we can operate them to get the curve there and move them around. At least that's my idea. So let's pull this out to about there, keep this straight, make this one a corner. Probably made this gap too big. There we go. Let's pull that in like so and move this down as well. I've made it too big, but it doesn't matter. There we go. Let's move this one down over here, corner. Move this. Make this one, well it is a corner, and just move it in until I like it. Now, I have a tendency to make my holly leaves exactly symmetrical, but of course they're not really, are they, in nature? They look, you know, sometimes they'll have odd sides. So, I don't have to be as perfect as all that. There we go, that's not bad is it? That will do. What do you think? Now I am going to make it just a bit bigger than I want for the moment. And I need a line down as well. So let's do a line, draw a line. Four black, no fill. I'm going to just do a straight one. I didn't want it for, did I? We want it one and a half. There we go. And I want to make it curve. If I can double click it. There we go. And then, there, got it. Make curve. Click this point. And change that. Move this over. There we go. Yeah, a little bit straighter there. I'll do. I'm going to duplicate that and make a left and a right because I want the line to be curving the other way. So object, mirror, flip horizontally and then I can just move it like so. And then this can be my left holly leaf and this can be my right. Put those there. I'll group them 
to go through in a minute. Now I'll do the berries, so red, and we'll have a one and a half line around them to match the leaf. So I want a circle, hold down the shift key. And as for size, I don't really know yet. So let's just do them any size. And I think that line is still too big actually for those. So let's go for one. We're going to need three berries, but I can duplicate those as we're putting the card together. So I think that will do. I'm not going to do the ribbon because you'll be adding that with string or twine or whatever. So we've got our main elements now. It's all about putting the card together. And let's just move these down here a minute. And setting up the pieces that will either print and cut or that you just want the shape for cutting out of coloured cardstock. I'm going to cheat and fill this with white and put a red line round it because that's my card base if I was going to be cutting my card base. Now we'll bring the circle in and the words and we need to bring them to the front so use the bring to front command and put that there. And then I'm going to duplicate my bird because I don't like to use my originals if I can help it. In fact, let's duplicate all of these and move them over there as well. And if I make a mess, I don't have to start from scratch again. And the bird is way too big. So let's make him smaller and just sort of put him in place and let's group our left leaf no that's our right leaf so and twizzle it and put that in place and work out what size we want and keep an eye on the size so that you can do the other one the same it might be that I could have mirrored it and that line would change but I never trust my mirroring skills. Sometimes I think I get things wrong. I'll tell you what, let's try it. Object, replicate, mirror, left. Oh, it does work. So I didn't need to have a second one after all. And now let's bring up our berry and put that there and I'm going to zoom in once let's get rid of point editing for the moment so that we can get our sizing right now I think my leaves are still a bit big so click them both holding the shift key then you can resize them both together by holding the shift key down and going in with the corner box and then we can move them I think that will be about right what do you think yeah let's do that sort of I think okay and then we've got our berries now that might be a little bit big so let's make it 0 0.22 okay let's try 0 0.20 and press enter maybe yeah that'll do yeah that'll do and now we need two more so duplicate duplicate and this one will be at the top, this one can go over here, and 
I mean, it's really personal preference. I don't know why I like them in a certain way, but I do. There we go. And then it's just a question of, do you think your bird is the right size? And I think he'll do. I think he's quite cute. As this video is already quite long, I'm going to skip the part where I set it up for print and cut and put it into a separate video. So keep an eye out for that. For now, I'll say goodbye and see you again soon.